Well, hi again, everybody. Welcome back to the Daily Smash for Thursday, May 4th, 2023. I'm Rick. I'm Kelly. And it's Runway Room Thursday. Kelly's going to do another makeup tutorial during the show. I and wasn't ready for you to start, but it's okay. Oh, you weren't? Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. Should I start again? No. It's oh. totally cool. While she's doing that and getting ready, I will remind you that we are sponsored by Ilya Wine. We interviewed the creator of Ilya Wine today, Layla Joy Williams, who now lives in Spain, but she's from New York. She's a fascinating, amazing, very accomplished woman. How cool is Layla? Very cool. Oh, my God. There it is. She's okay. gorgeous. I yeah. mean, she's absolutely beautiful. I and asked her if she was a model. She and said smart, no. Smart. Accomplished. And Nothing like having a woman. Running a company. Running a company <laughs> and being smart. I just love that. I just find it so inspirational. I married a very smart woman. No, I want to be like her. <laughs> well. You know? We're on our way. She's on her way to being a mogul, and so are we. Exactly. So we're going to show you. I'm sorry. I want her to be a mogul. Yeah, me too. I told her how excited we are to work with her and how excited we are to be a part of her growth and her company. So you can get your Ilya wine. By the way, she said this was might have been her favorite. She loves the Roble Red, but she also loves this Moscatel Macabeo. And you can get yours at 10% off at Ilya.com using the discount code Rick and Kelly 10 Nice. And we're going to show you a clip of that interview in just a minute. So, okay, Runway Room Thursday. It's Runway Room Thursday. So people ask me, often ask me, why I use these iPads. And I have some that my girlfriend, Lena, when she did my eyebrows from San Francisco, True Beauty Aesthetics, if you want to follow her, um, she brought me back a whole bunch from San Francisco. And you can get them on Amazon. But I love these pat top patch Patchology, patchology, I guess. Patchology. Yes, and you can get them at a uh, Sephora or Amazon, whatever. But what I love, I love to put these hydrating pads on my eyes before I put my makeup on because it hydrates the underneath. Because women have a lot of wrinkles, which I mean, I do underneath my eyes, and Ooh, it just hi now. when you hydrate your skin yeah. before you prep it. Your, your makeup goes on better. Oh, So okay. I love to put these under patches on before I put my makeup on, mainly because it hydrates again, but also when I put my eye um, shadow on, it catches there. So Where, you don't, like you don't if, have to clean it off or whatever? You don't whatever. have to clean it off with a, a, a Neutrogena uh -huh. makeup wipe. Okay. It's just, it's just, it's nice. So what do you, how do you start? Um, so I usually start with the concealer, the runway room concealer, and I like I like the pink flush. People are like, oh, it's too pink. I like it because when I put it underneath, I have a, some dark tones underneath my eyes, and when you, I use pink, it kind of it, like it it takes that darkness away. It's kind of like. You know when you like, you know, like yellow and blue make green. Yeah. I guess if you put like a pink flush on, my mom, I remember like in the eighties, my mom would put concealer on. It was always white underneath her eyes. Yeah. And that was like in the eighties, right? And the people with like that white would like make your under because you know, like you can see the difference. See that right mm -hmm. there compared to that? That looks yeah. darker. Uh huh. Sometimes it's purple. Sometimes it's like darkish i like pink because pink it it really takes out those colors those pigments in your underneath your skin mm -hmm. and i don't know it works well for my skin i i don't yeah, know like other i don't know other people um but for my for me and i'm you know dark complected uh it works well for me and then i like looks like it blends well it blends well see it just it just opens up your eyes Okay. So I, I like to put I like to put my concealer on uh, first. Coming up, Jamie Foxx speaks, Newsmax calls again, and Kelly finds a better deal on a duvet. Uh, another, another helpful hint for you guys. Uh, first base, first base. But first, first base. First base is my. F this is probably one of my one of my favorite favorite products. In the entire makeup world. Is that And right? I shop everything, everywhere, everything. 
Uh, I just love this. I mean, look, you'll see right now. Okay. While she's doing that, um, we had my skin. See, we had a Taco Tuesday yesterday. Uh, Frank and Coral came over, and I bet Frank on the game. I gave him one and a half points because that was the line that we found online. The Warriors were favored, and they got beat. I lost fifty bucks. He'd been betting lately <laughs> on sports, and you've been losing every time. I think it's I, time to give it up. I only have bet on the big events like the NCAA, the Super Bowl, and now the NBA playoffs. And you're right, I suck. Yeah. So maybe I'll just quit quit betting. I like this face base. Yeah. Runway room face base. Uh, I think this is number C for my color. But you can go on Instagram or online on face on runwayroom.com, take a picture of yourself, and they will color match you. Cool. Um, and you do have a discount code, right? It's Kelly20, right? Mm-hmm. 20% off on runwayroom.com. 20% off. Is, and make, she loves this. You legit love this makeup. I legit love this makeup. I yeah. absolutely adore this makeup. And I have everything. Even Tarte, Tarte right here, they sent me a whole bunch of tons of makeup. I, yeah. I really don't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the concealer from Tarte I like. Yeah. But I like this concealer better. Okay. I do. I don't know. It um, has, but thank you, Tarte, for sending me makeup. I really appreciate it. You, you might have seen a clip of Kelly's interview with Nick Ritchie last week. Uh, her interview was spectacular. I also did an interview with him, and it is on Facts Today, Thursday. F-A-C-T-Z, facts.com. And Nick told me he thinks the interview is amazing. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. But uh, I encourage you guys to go over to facts and check it out. Also, Newsmax, uh, they keep calling me. So I did, like I don't know, three live shots with them last week. I did one on, uh, what was it, Tuesday. And I'm doing another one on, I did one with Greg Kelly Wednesday night. And I'm doing another one Thursday at 10 a.m. If you haven't, if Eastern, or no, 1 p.m. Eastern. So if you... It's not that late yet. You can turn on Newsmax and check out my another interview. You know what? Every one of my smashers, you guys are so nice. So, so nice. Yeah. It's just, it's so nice because everyone just loves you, Rick. Oh. And, you know, uh, it's just so great that everybody out there gets to know you a little bit more. You didn't, you weren't on the show that long with me. You were only on like five episodes, but... It's really, really nice to see all the nice accolades everyone's giving you. It's just, it's really nice. And thank you so much. You know, he's just such a talented person. And I'm just glad that you get get to see it. Thank you. I mean, they they love you too. And they love this format for you and for us. And I actually pulled a few comments of people. I I don't want to just read nice things about us. We do read negative comments too. But we have so many we got so many nice messages in the last day. It just I screwed that one up. It blows me away. Um, what, what are you doing right now? I kind of screwed it up. But they say that, see, if you put the, the bronzing stick right here, it's supposed to uh, make your skin look like more defined. Like... Oh my God, the transformation is remarkable. And I put it on the top like this because I have such a big forehead (laughs) that it makes sure I'm trying to shrink it a little bit. (laughs) Well, you look great. Uh, I want to read a couple comments. From Sharon Walker, A.J. Buckley said it best, after going through an economic disaster due to COVID, the ones who are hurt by this strike, the writer's strike, are the crew. The crew who does all the grunt work for the writers will suffer the consequences, making it seem selfish about what the writers are doing. I agree with Kelly. Hire new hungry writers and move on. We don't have time for this stuff. And now I am sure the entire group will expect unemployment handouts, making it even worse. See, this person thinks like I do. (laughs) But did you get the other one? Yeah. Okay, so Rick and I were laughing today when we were doing our stuff. We were cracking up talking about there are so many facets and different ideas that everyone has. Yeah. And and even Kelly and I disagree. We, we had a basic disagreement about the writer's strike. And I said to Kelly, you know, that's amazing that you and I can disagree on something and listen to each other's viewpoints and respect each other's viewpoints. 
And why can't the rest of the world do that anymore? Like nobody wants to hear opposing viewpoints anymore. And that's how you learn when you listen to someone who feels differently than you do about something. And it was funny. He was like, colleges, colleges out there that are about learning and growing and uh, exchange of ideas. He's like, they don't. What you, see, you see them shouting down conservatives who, who have scheduled appearances on campus to, to present a different point of view about something. And they'll send protesters in there. They'll try to shut it down. They'll shout, shout over the speaker to try and drown him out. Like, what are you doing? Why aren't you trying to learn? Why aren't you at least listening to an opposing viewpoint? Have a healthy debate? It just blows my mind on a college campus. That, that kids wouldn't want to learn. Oh, we only want to hear what we want to hear. Right. So, but it's funny when I was saying that about the Writers Guild yesterday, that yeah. person completely agrees and then, with my comment. And then listen to this one. Just Joe. Fighting for workers' rights is the basis for improving rights and conditions for all society. Kelly, I respectfully disagree with you promoting scabs. Giving corporations more power takes away basics from good working people. Solidarity is the only equalizer workers have. And then I put, I stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Just Joe, for your viewpoint. Thank you all for writing in. Um, Gold Farb, such a fun, happy show. Love you too. The dream team. My favorite part, the donkey loving that little girl. So precious. And you know what? What I like about runway makeup? What? They don't. They don't test on animals. Oh, that's true. They don't. Nope. And that's what I love about them. But what I just put on right now is I put on the mineral cream blush. Nice. Right here. Pauline Dwyer, thank you for that, Kelly. I am a teacher of 22 years and have been without a contract for the past 10 months. They agreed on one, and after taxes, will give me about an extra 48 bucks in my check. I had like three or four comments. Was, Kelly, teachers are not underpaid. <laughs> well, I have a lot of my friends, a lot, and Julie's teachers, well, she goes to Catholic school, so it's kind of on the lower, but a lot of my girlfriends, they all... Uh, they're getting underpaid. They yeah. it's known that that teachers are underpaid. Kelly and Rick living their best lives says KC thirty seventy four. It looks like you have so much fun and have found a great work slash life balance. Meanwhile, I sit tethered to a headset and computer, taking auto claim calls for a large insurance company forty plus hours a week. I haven't figured things out, and most days want to throw myself off my chair. <laughs> I used to feel sorry. like that when I was in advertising. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's so important to be happy at, at work, to want to go to work. I, I hope you find something that makes you happy. Just le just listen to us at work. Yeah. We have a dream job. <laughs> Tony Brooks, this has nothing really to do with the show today, but it's beautiful to see how authentic your love is toward one another. It brings a smile to my face when I watch you both. Oh, that's so nice. It really is nice. And then uh, user J6FS8RS. Kelly and Rick, words can't express how much joy you bring to so many. You both are truly a godsend. The genuine authenticity you both exude is so refreshing in a world of so many fakes and phonies. This particular episode was so enlightening in showing how successful you both are and are continuing to be. So well-deserved. You work hard together to create a side of entertainment for us who have open hearts and minds to truly enjoy and that we rarely see these days. Kelly, I just know Andy is seething because of your growing successes. That is so nice. Really? Wow. He probably didn't expect anything much would happen after Bravo. Well, it's happening tenfold. He may be having major second thoughts now about the firing, but his narcissistic overblown ego won't let him admit it. Rick, as you continue to get TV coverage, I'm sure he's irked by that also. I love it. God bless you, Rick and your family. I love it too, you know? I know we have a thing. In, um, are we talking about the Budweiser thing? Uh, that's on our Patreon. Okay. Well, uh, Rick and Kelly show on Patreon. We have some in insider information. We're going to talk about that on our Patreon. And it's, it's about really Budweiser good. About, losing major but dollars. But Rick has an insider that... Uh, does or PR or whatever. And so he has some information. But anyway, if you guys want to listen to Patreon, you can hear us talk about that. But anyway, I was thinking about like all that woke bull crap that uh -huh. these people are trying to do, like that Heather DeBro spewing her nonsense into the show and them like praising it, like Andy Cohen giving the hand claps and all that. You know, I, 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 I wonder if 
people like our smashers are completely turned off by that because a lot of people, a lot of Americans are turned off by this little minor minority that are loud and just turning off the other uh, the other side. I, th- I think you may be onto something. Um, there's we'll find clearly, out. There's clearly a, a wave now building of opposition and, and anger over some of the nonsense that we've been subjected to, and it gets worse and worse. And that is something we focus a lot on this week on our Rick and Kelly show on Patreon.com. So we encourage you to sign up. Subscribe. It's only 5 bucks a month. That's what it starts at. And we have 88 episodes. Number 89 is coming out this week, and we go longer, and we're uncensored and unfiltered on Patreon.com. In the news now. Uh, real quick, I like this lip liner. Uh, it's from Runway Room Cosmetics. It's yeah. called 90s Brown. And everyone knows I'm a 90s girl. Doo-doo Brown. I'm a 90s girl. <laughs> um, and then... That's two live crew. Uh, the Bride. Nice. The Bride. Oh, I like that color. Thank you. This is Runway Room. Kelly 20 is the discount code. Runwayroom.com. <sighs> In the news now. In the news. Jamie Foxx breaks his silence amid medical emergency and long-term hospitalization. Jamie Foxx says he's feeling blessed as he continues to battle health issues that left him hospitalized. The actor 55 took to social media to break his silence, saying, appreciate all the love, feeling blessed. He wrote that on an Instagram post along with emojis of praying hands, a heart, and a fox. He also shared his appreciation for Nick Cannon, who's filling in for him on a TV show. Appreciate ya, my boy, Nick, at Nick Cannon. He wrote, see you all soon. That's what irks me, really, really irks me. You're a public figure. You're out to be, um, I mean, you do everything. You're a singer, you're a songwriter. And I've, I know um, I've been with Jamie Foxx. I had dinner with him. I'll show you a picture. Uh-huh. You can add that in there. Uh, my girlfriend was roommates with him in college back but in the day. You're going to react to this where the family asked for privacy during this time? Yeah, did you read that? Uh, no, I just did. Okay. Um, so he says, I, we ask, what, what does it say? The family Rich? asked for privacy at this time. You're a public figure. People want to know what is wrong with you. What, what You know, that's what just, it, or I understand that you probably do want to have a private life. I get it. But say what you're in there for. Like, you're a public figure. People... Like you put yourself out there, you do these things, and people want to know what's wrong with you. Like, right? So you're saying that once you become a public figure, you sort of give up your right to privacy because I, people are paying to see you, paying to hear you. Yes, I paying. think so. Yeah, absolutely. I think so. So he has an obligation. To he has his an fans. obligation to his fans to t- to say what 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 is wrong with him. Well, you're someone who's always been very upfront about your life and what's going on. You in are in, you want to be famous. You got into the business because you want to be. So you shouldn't be able to pick and choose when you, when you can share information and when you can't. Right. I, that's what I think. Well, it's an interesting point of view. I don't know. I, I just, it, it irks me to say what's wrong with you. What happened? Why are you in there? You, you want people to respect your privacy at this time? I, I get it. You want to have privacy, but also your fans want to know. I, I get it too. And, and it raises more questions than maybe are necessary. Like the, when you don't say what's wrong, people then start making assumptions which could be totally off base. And I don't really understand why you wouldn't just tell people what was wrong or at least give them some idea so that they can maybe care even more about what happens to you. And and I don't know. I I kind of, I I agree with you on this point. I actually really love this runway room, runway room brush. This is for, uh, to put your foundation on. And this is to put your blush on to blend. Well, I have to say you nice. look you look absolutely fantastic. Thank you. You really, really do look beautiful. Thank you. I make mean, it's remarkable you do that that quickly. I mean, you look beautiful to start. Um, I did want to share one clip before we go. In fact, we'll just we can just end the show with Layla Joy Williams, who uh, created Runway Room. Just a, a little inspirational clip from her uh, from our interview earlier today. So check it out, and we hope you have a smashtastic day. And we will see you again tomorrow. Bye, guys. Have a good day. So I am speaking to you from the middle central of Spain, um, uh, in an area called Valencia. Uh, the smaller city is actually Alicante, which is the majority of where our wine is produced. 
Um, and I'm in the middle of the throes of production as we speak. <laughs> you know, we, we're all familiar with an American in Paris and you're an American yeah. in Spain. What is that like? I know. Is it Can a- I tell you as much? Is it a, it's, a, it's, you, it's, it's always like a, a, it's a funny dance with me because in terms of quality of life, I've never had better quality of life in my life. I mean, these people are like, they understand how to enjoy life. Every day there's like a break in the day where people go home, have a proper lunch, siesta. They spend time with their families. They, they go back to work later in the day. The weekends, people are resting. You know, holidays, people are resting. They <laughs> focus. They are passionate about their food like the French. Um, and, and so you, I really can't complain. It's a fantastic place to live. I mean, I'm from New York City where you, you eat and you run, you know? Um, and then there's the other side of it when you're an American doing business here Timelines are, they think they're suggestions and we'll get to it tomorrow or next week, or there's a holiday. So that can be a challenge as well. But I, I suppose I, having had the life I had in the past, this is probably what I needed to kind of like balance things out. Yeah. You must be so slammed though, running your own company like this with so many little things you have to take care of. Yeah, it is. I'm going to tell you that I'm even more than the fashion, I really enjoy this. I love, I love learning. There's so many things that mm, I mean, I'm meeting so many more people. The price point is different. So people are a lot more open to trying things. You know, my whole thing was always stilettos and, you know, sexy. That's not for everybody. And it's really nice to develop a product in the brand that's for everybody, you know, and even, even so much of the we're developing a non-alcoholic beverage as well. Um, I'm loving it. I'm really, it's, it's a lot of work. I'm not gonna, it's not something where I'm just slapping my name on something. And, you know, I am involved in every single aspect from the pricing to the, you know, to the, this, to the, that, everything. <laughs> the big question really, mm-hmm. how did you discover the Rick and Kelly show on YouTube and the daily smash? Why, why the did pandemic. You us? <laughs> the pandemic. <laughs> the pandemic. I was sitting home. I was it was like maybe 2021. It was still, you know, people were still taking it easy over here. I was starting to fill out at that point and wasn't able to really go very many places. So uh, YouTube became like a, a resource just to kind of keep in the background. And I, first of all, I know you, Kelly, from the Housewives. Mm-hmm. So I should say that. And then um, I saw you guys on YouTube at some point. I don't know exactly when. And mm-hmm. I just, I love this, this platform. I think it's great. I think it's a much better platform personally, Kelly, for you, because I think people get to really see who you are, you know, and I just want to say that, but it's fantastic. Yeah. One of the, the best aspects of Europe is that they, they are, they love, they, they live for community. And that's really what I'm creating with the brand. I want this brand to be for everybody, whether she's a teacher or he's an executive. I want them to equally enjoy the brand. I want them to equally enjoy the fact that they're getting something of value. I, I'm somebody who personally just speaks to everybody. You know, I love hearing people's stories. And that is, I want, in, in light of the world being as chaotic as it is, I really want this space to be something where um, we're not only providing or, you know, bringing to the market really great product, but we're also using our brand to help the world in some way, shape or form. But I just love the idea of, coming together. If, if I've not learned nothing in Europe, it's really about, they don't uh, live to work, they work to live. And that is a, that is, couldn't be, I mean, these people, you know, four or five weeks for summer vacation, you know, people shut down. They don't, you couldn't pay them anymore. They're not interested in your money. They want to spend time with their families. They want to be home. And I just, it's just been an amazing, unique experience because most of my whole life has been harried and this has been an opportunity to really take in something new and different. So this brand is really about inclusion, bringing people together. We have something for everybody. And so that's really um, the premise of Elia. That sounds great. We love working with you and yeah. we love- uh, Thank you. I, I, we do. <laughs> as soon as I saw that there wasn't another brand there, I was like, Hold on, let me get get to Rick. I was in a meeting and I, I, I something told me to log on and I was like, let me find, let me get in touch with them immediately. So I'm so I'm so happy, I'm so proud to be working with you guys. You guys are great, 
And I think this is such a fantastic platform. You guys are bringing people joy, which is what people need right now. They really need it. Thank you. So thank you.